Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a few more that may that may come in while the stream is live. Um, I apologize for the technical difficulties last week, um, but uh, hopefully we've got them resolved. Uh, it seemed to have been some issues with YouTube, but hopefully that hopefully that is fixed tonight. We're not going to have any problems. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just come to you tonight, God, in, in, in praise and in worship. We have come to magnify you, God. We have come to praise you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now that you would just send your spirit a fresh wind, God, through the homes of every individual who is watching this live tonight or those who are watching this later on after it's uh, as a pre-recorded message God I pray that you would still just sweep through those homes God sweep through that individual God and let them just feel your presence right now in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus God you know what we need you know the touch from heaven God that we need we ask you just to bring it right now in the mighty name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. God of creation. There at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, he spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship, so will I I can see your heart in everything you made Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. sound of your voice 
And as you speak A hundred billion creatures catch your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you said If it all reveals your nature, so will I I can see your heart in everything you say Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace If creation still obeys you, so will I If the stars were made to worship, so will I If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I Grow your greatness, so will I For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I if the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. salvation chased down my heart all of my failure and pride on a hill you created light in the world abandoned in darkness to die and as you speak a hundred billion failures disappear Where you lost your life So I could find it here If you left the grave behind you So will I I can see your heart In everything you've done Every part designed in a work of art called love If you gladly chose surrender, so will I I can see your heart a billion different ways Every precious one, child you died to save Them, so will I Like you would again A hundred billion times But what measure could Amount to your desire You're the one who never leaves The one behind Hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we just praise you tonight, Jesus. We give you all praise tonight, God. Hallelujah. All glory goes to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
And as you speak A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship so alive I can see your heart in everything you made Every burning star a signal fire of grace Sings your praises so loud. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God, when we go out and look up at the stars at night, Lord, Lord, let us be mindful that you created every star, every galaxy. You created every quasar. God, you created everything, God, in the heavens, Lord. Even the thing that we haven't discovered yet, God, you already know it is there. You made it. You designed it. And God, even though we are just blown away by all of the mysteries of the heavens, God, you, you made us. And you call us the apple of your eye. And your mind is ever upon us. And we just praise you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Silencing my every fear I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of miracles I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of miracles I believe in you. 
thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Jesus. The God who was and is to come, the power of the risen one, the power of the risen one. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. The God of miracles. The God who was and is to come. The power of the risen one. The power of the risen one. The God who brings the dead to life. God of miracles, you're the God of miracles. I believe in you, I believe in you, you're the God of miracles. Yes, you are, Lord. I believe in you, I believe in you. You're the God of miracles I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of miracles Yes, you are, Lord Yes, I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of the God of miracles. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Yes, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Yes, you are. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Yes, I believe in you. Oh, I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you Yes, we believe in you You're the God of miracles The God who was and is to come The power of the risen one The power of the risen one The God Brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. The God who was and is to come. Power of the risen one. Power of the risen one. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. Yes, I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God. Yeah. 
takes real faith right now during this season to say God I still believe that you're the worker of miracles hallelujah I still believe God that you can do anything Lord I still believe that you have all of creation in the palm of your hand God I still believe Jesus for a moment and just just think on the Lord right now just tell him say God I love you Lord Jesus I love you Lord Jesus I praise you Hallelujah. I praise you Jesus I praise you Jesus
That's what we want more than anything, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Praise you, Jesus. I don't know about you at home, but I just I feel the presence of God.
about him right now and the angels in heaven they're singing holy 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 just begin to sing this to him yes hallelujah oh hallelujah God. We'll be right back with the message in just one moment. Continue to stay in the presence of God and pray for this message that's coming. Amen.
Praise God. And uh, we're back. Uh, takes a second to get everything set up, moving all this around. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Let me move this down just a little bit. And uh, can everybody hear me all right? Uh, I see we have Christy on here and Joanne and Marquita and... Um, We've got Sandra. Sandra's good to have you and uh, Becky. <coughs> Move my other. Uh, and Becky and Kendra. And uh, since Becky's there, I know Ricky's there. Uh, Jeanette is probably there. Marquita, if I didn't say Marquita. And uh, Becky gave me the thumbs up, so I know you can. I know you can hear me. Good. Praise God. I apologize for the the issues uh, last week. We. Tell you what, we were having a lot of technical issues, and I'm not sure exactly what it was, but um, it might have been something with YouTube, because I think Dwayne and um, <clears throat> Lindsay were having some issues as well, they said, so I'm glad it wasn't just me. Um, uh, I'm going to, I feel like this is such a good format to kind of preach the word, uh, next Sunday we'll be we'll be going back into our church, uh, Liberty Ministries uh, Church International here in Greenville, and uh, so I'll be I'll be moving all my equipment back over there and getting it set up for Sunday morning service, and I'll be preaching there Sunday night. But I'm going to do some type of format uh, for for live streaming. What I'll probably do is uh, whatever I preach Sunday night, I'll probably like re-record it for for YouTube in this format and um we may me and hope we're talking we may even do like a like a like a, a saturday night worship or something i'm not sure we're going to figure something out so that uh, we can still do this live online because there's only so many oh hey marty marty's there too hey marty good good to see you uh my daughter's abijah's head was covering it up i couldn't read it down there um but we want to continue to try to reach out to a lot of other people that are out there. Um, let's uh, let's open up with prayer before I bring uh, this word. Father God, we just thank you so much for your precious word, God. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, that you have delivered it to us, God. We thank you for the power that is in the word. We thank you, God, that you have given us the responsibility to, to carry the gospel. And Lord, we don't we don't do this, God, lightfully, Lord. We know, God, we know that it is a precious thing, God, to carry your word and your gospel and to be citizens of your kingdom and to represent you well. And, God, we pray that we are doing it well. We pray, God, that you would begin to equip us right now, God, through your word. Lord, we have praised you, and so we know that, Lord, that you are here in the midst. We know that, God, that you are here in the midst of of us in our homes right now spending time with us. And God, we thank you for that. We know this because of your word. God, your word says that you inhabit the praise of your people. So we know that you are here because we have been praising you and we are your people. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for the promises of God, none of which have ever failed. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you would allow this message to be understood by all of those who are listening live tonight and by those who listen later god we pray that it, it'll touch the person who is watching at the time that they're watching it and that it will give instruction to their heart i pray god that you would just anoint my my heart my mouth god my lips right now to speak not what i would have to speak but god only what you would have for me to speak i pray all of this in the mighty name of jesus and everybody said Amen. Let's see some amens go up through the chat there if you said amen. I'm going to be talking about the preparation of the heart. The preparation of the heart. And when I talk about the preparation of the heart, I'm, I'm also talking about, I'm really talking about the preparation of the mind. Because uh, as we know, the the heart is really just an organ that beats when the Bible is talking about the, the, the heart. It's actually talking about the seat of our emotions, where our emotions are, where our mind, where the faculty 
of our, our thinking. That's where, that's where the real heart is. Um, <clears throat> um, so it, it's important that we prepare our heart, that we make our heart ready for worship, that we make our heart ready for, for doing his work and to, to do his labor, to do what it is that he called us, his purpose in our life. We have to prepare our heart. You know, if you're getting ready to do anything that's going to be important, you're going to make sure that you study. I mean, anybody that's ever been in school, I'm sure that you have uh, you had a have a test. And so, what do you do before a test? You study. You you do the homework. You um, I can't hear what that says. What read what that says? Hope. <laughs> amen. Amen. We we uh, we want to make sure that our mind and our heart is set and ready for him. So if we're going to if we would study for a test, why would we not study for the word of God so that we can be ready for his word and to carry his purpose out in our lives? Uh, it's not something that we should do haphazardly. Preparation of the heart. Preparation of the heart. I'm going to be um, going and I'm going to bring it up here for you. Uh, this is going to be Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16, and everybody should see it up there. Um, Proverbs 16, and I'm going to be reading chapter, I mean, excuse me, verse 2 and 3. All of my scriptures tonight, I believe, are going to be right here in Proverbs 16. So this is where we'll be. I'll make it just a little bit larger there. It says, All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. You know, I could stop right there and preach for a long time because, excuse me, we, um, no matter what it is that we're doing in life, it is easy for us to approve of what it is that we're doing. Man, it is so easy for us to approve of what we're doing and think that what we're doing is right. You know, if, uh, if you've ever been in a meeting or you're among a discussion of people, it is so, you know, usually the most important thought in the room in many cases is, is your own because we, we put a lot of value on what we're thinking and on what we're going to say. And, you know, listening is, is a discipline. Listening is an art. And it takes, uh, it takes a heart of a teacher. It takes a heart of someone who wants to learn of someone who wants instruction in order to, you know, set your own thoughts, your own agenda aside, <coughs> excuse me, and to, and to listen to what other people are saying and what it is that is on their mind and what it is that they're speaking. Because God, you know, he doesn't just bring everything through us and through our mind. I know that we would like to think, oh, God, well, you know, he, he speaks everything I need to know straight through me. Well, I, I, there's been many times where God, Many, many times, more times than he's than he's brought it through my mind, has he brought it through someone else's and he's taught me more times than he has brought something to my uh, to my uh, mental faculties. Uh, has he actually brought it through the voice of someone else? And so it's important that we listen to what other people are saying and what it is that they may say, because God may be using them to speak to us. Amen. And so it's important that we we recognize that God, guess what? He uses other people besides ourselves, And I think that's a very important thing for us to realize. And as this starts off and says, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. All of them, every one of them. If I don't go to him and, to, and make sure that, God, are you happy with what I'm doing? Are you satisfied with what I'm doing? Are you pleased with uh, with my thinking? Are you pleased with my ways? Are you pleased with what it is that I'm trying to accomplish? Is this what you want me to do? If I don't check in with him, guess what? I will end up doing something that I think is good because I think it's a good thing to do. And I may be missing the mark by a mile because what he may want me to do could be completely different. And it doesn't matter. And I've said this many times in a lot of messages it doesn't matter if what we're doing is good. It only matters if what we're doing is right. That is the most important thing, to do what is right. And you can just look at the story of, of Saul and realize that because worshiping God is a good thing. But when you worship God and you're disobeying him in doing it, because you remember God told him to kill all of the cattle 
And he kept them and said, I'm going to make a sacrifice unto God with this. He disobeyed. It sounded like this is going to be a good thing. I'm going to be worshiping God. How could God disapprove? Well, he disapproved because it wasn't what he had asked for him to do. He was disobeying him. And so if we do that, if we disobey God, if we do the opposite of what he's wanting, it doesn't matter how good it is in in our own ways. Again, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. I've got to make sure that they're clean in God's eyes. And the way that I know that they're clean is if it's what is right in his eyes. It says, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. He weigheth the spirits. Verse 3, commit thy works unto the Lord. Everybody say that. Commit thy works unto the Lord. And thy thoughts shall be established. You know, that is such such a powerful scripture. If, if anything that we do, if we're not doing it for ourselves, if, if we're doing that work, if we're carrying out that, that project uh, or, or doing that mission or doing that task, if we're doing it for God, if we're doing it for the Lord and we're committing it to him saying, God, I am doing this for you, I'm doing this for you, then our thoughts, it says, shall be established. Because it's in our mind, it's in our mind to please him. And so God will establish the thoughts of us. If, if I, if, uh, you know, Mother's Day, I believe, is this, this coming Sunday, it's coming up. If in my mind I say, oh, you know what, man, I, I gotta get, I, I've got to get hope. My wife, I've got to get hope, a, uh, a, a gift. She needs a gift. Man, I'd really love a new bowling ball in order to go bowling. Man, that would be wonderful to have a new bowling ball. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll buy, buy her a bowling ball, and then I can borrow it from her. We can both go bowling, and we can both use it, and it'll be her bowling ball, and I will, I will use that bowling ball with her. Well, already I've not committed that, uh, that holiday. I've not committed that purpose of, of honoring her on that day. I've not committed myself to doing that because... I, my thoughts are not being established in order to please her because if they were really about pleasing her, then I wouldn't be thinking about myself. I would be thinking about what it is that makes her happy. How many times do we do that? You know, that sounds so clear to us, and you may be smiling or laughing to yourself thinking, why would anybody do that? But we do. people do it all the time in ministry. They do it all the time for God. They think, oh, man, this is a good thing, and God is... He, he, I'm, I'm going to be doing this, and, and, and God has to be happy with it. But we never asked God. We never asked him if he was happy with it. We just did it because we wanted to. My goodness. Do you know how many people, okay, I, I can't go there. Uh, do you know how many people are in purposes that they were never called for, and they're doing it because of some other reason than to please God? Uh, they're doing it because this is what they want to do. And God is saying, you're occupying a spot that you don't belong in. Man, I want to make sure above everything else that I'm pleasing God and what it is that he wants. Any decision that I make, I need to make sure that God is on board with it. Amen? So um, let's go on down. I'm going to be looking at the uh, same chapter, Proverbs 16, and we're going to be looking at verse 6 and 7 right here. Verse 6 and 7. It says, by mercy and truth, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You know, iniquity is an interesting type of sin because uh, I always say that sin, sin is the things that you can see. If someone is drunk, you can see they're, they're drunk. If someone is high, you can see they're high. If, um, if someone steals something and you see it, you can see them steal something. Sins are, most sins are the things that we see. Iniquity is a very hard thing to purge out of somebody because iniquity are secret sins. It's those things that can be in, in the heart of someone and be inside of there and they can do it and nobody else knows. We have people who 
go to their jobs, they go to church, they go to work, they go, uh, they go around their family, and they see individuals that are there, and they have problems with them. They don't like them, maybe because they're envious of them. And so in their heart, even though they say, hey, how you doing? It's good to see you. And after they walk off, they say, man, I can't stand them. See, they've got malice in their heart towards somebody. Now, the person doesn't know. And because that person doesn't know and no one else around knows, they think, well, everything's fine because nobody knows. But that's the problem with iniquity. Iniquity is a secret sin that, that uh, only God can really purge unless it is revealed, unless God allows that thing to come out in a conversation so that he can deal with it. In many cases, it takes this. It says, by mercy, because listen, how many people are walking around with iniquity in their heart and God is having mercy on them and he is waiting on them to change and for, for them to acknowledge that there's something wrong in my spirit. There's something wrong inside of me. No, nobody is going to tell me. Nobody's going to tell me that it's messed up. Nobody's going to tell me that I've done something wrong. Uh, I, I, I need to acknowledge it for myself. I need to look on the inside of myself and see that there's something that is wrong that doesn't line up with God. And the only way that we're going to do that is by truth by truth. Every time a preacher begins to talk to you uh, in, in preaching and he says something that, uh, that, that you can think about and say, man, I am doing that. I'm messing up here. This is, this is in me. God is speaking to you. That's why, you know, preachers, will, I, I love to preach. I don't like to know anything that's really going on with people because I want the Holy Ghost to be able to speak to me freely. I don't want to be aware of anything that's going on so that I can talk about something and step on somebody's toes. I don't want to be considerate around someone when the Holy Ghost is trying to speak through me about something that someone's doing. I'd rather speak and be it, the person is uh, completely just removed from me. I don't know anything about what's going on in their life. And I can't tell you how many times someone has come up to me and said, you don't realize, maybe you don't realize what's going on in my life, but you were talking to me tonight. See, I love that. Had I known, had I known that there was something going on, I could allow my flesh to get in the, in, in the way. Oh, man. There are so many times where we have people that are in our families or uh, people that we don't want to offend and we know something's going on with them and instead of saying, you're right, you're, you're, you're doing, this is wrong, like, but I'm here to help you. Instead, we say, oh, well, you know, God knows and we, we, we basically water it down and the Holy Spirit is saying, no, I'm trying to talk to them. Why don't you just acknowledge and quit being worried about offending them? I, you know, I don't, life is too short to worry about offending people. You know, when God, when the, the Lord Jesus walked to this earth, he, he, he said, you know, I, I'm, I come to bring a sword. He wanted them to know the truth. He brought the truth. The, uh, the, the word of God is powerful and more mightier than any two-edged sword, able to cut, to, uh, dividing asunder of bone and marrow. It cuts down into people's lives and they have to e either acknowledge on what side am I on? Am I on the wrong side or the right side? Am I lining up with God or am I not? Is God happy with what I'm doing based on the scripture am I reading that I'm reading or is he not happy? And when we get that truth, remember verse six, by mercy and truth, when we get that truth, we have to acknowledge it and God is trying to work on us and we have to realize that there's something going on so that we can say, God, forgive me, have mercy on me. I, nobody else knows, but God, nothing is hidden from you. So God, I ask you right now to forgive me and God can purge it. Now, let me tell you, uh, you don't have to go down in front of the church and tell them, hey, listen, you don't realize what was going on, but, uh, you know, brother so-and-so, I couldn't stand you. You don't have to do that unless God just leads you to do that. It's inside of you, and God will purge that iniquity in you, those secret sins, if you will acknowledge what his word says. Don't wait for Sometimes people have to wait for it to be uncovered or for it to come out before you acknowledge and say, Lord, this was wrong. I'm sorry. I'd rather God deal with me in private. Amen. Let's move on. And it says, And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. You know, once men know that they have done something wrong and they have a fear of God, I can't. I, there are so many people who have been on their deathbed 
And a deathbed can bring about a fear on someone. I, I'm, I'm not someone who wants anybody to wait for the, the, uh, f- to be on a deathbed in order to ask God for forgiveness because a lot of people die in crashes every day or they die from a heart attack and they never have a chance to ask God to forgive them. So I would rather have a fear of God right now and in everything that I'm doing and ask God, Lord, you know, I've done wrong, forgive me. I, I've done wrong, forgive me. Help me, help me through this. So, you know, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Verse 7, it says, When a man's ways, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. I can't tell you how powerful that scripture is. You know, if I am pleasing the Lord, If I am pleasing him, the Bible says, and remember, God's word is infallible. And so if he says it, I can stand on it and say, God, I'm going to make sure that no matter what, I'm pleasing you. He says he will maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. You've got people that you feel like are against you or coming against you or plotting against you or don't like you. Don't worry about them. You keep sleeping good at night and just make sure that you are pleasing the Lord, pleasing God in everything that you're you're doing. Because if you do that, you will line up with this scripture. Amen. When a man's ways please the Lord. Only way I'm going to please the Lord with my ways is if I have a fear of God. If I don't have a fear of God, then I will think that I can get away with anything. Especially if it's something that is iniquity that is in my heart and no one is aware of it. The Bible says that if the good man of the house had known when his Lord was going to return, it says he was a good man, he would not have had his house to be broken up, his household to be broken up. You can't walk around and try to play church and try to be one thing in front of the church and be something else in front of somebody else. You know, I'm the same all the time. I want people to know, hey, I serve the Lord, and they know. They know that I'm a man of God. They know know I I don't... There's things I don't do. There's jokes I don't care about. There's things I'm not going to be a part of. They know that. And they know that because I'm the same all the time because I have that kind of character. And it's because I'm allowing God to change me. I'm allowing God to mold me. I want to be one of his citizens, and I want to be a reflection of him. And I think that is such an important thing. All right, let's uh, let's go down here. Um, I'm going to be going down to verse. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to be going to just yet because uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you uh, a little a little story about this this verse uh, that I'm about to read. I'm not going to give you all the details about what happened, um, but I was kind of going through uh, basically a little situation at at my my work that I was uh, I was sort I, I was bothered about. I was kind of bothered. There was a a little basically it was a change that occurred. And I, I wasn't I wasn't happy with the change. I, I thought, man, I just, I, you know, sometimes you can think, you know, I've I've done so much, I've put in uh, so many uh, hours, I've given so much of myself and so much effort, and I, I feel like that, you know, I'm, I'm deserving of more. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And but when we begin to react to something, when we begin to react to something because of what we think that we're deserving of. It's one thing to know I'm deserving of this, but if we react instead of respond, remember reacting is like a a knee-jerk reaction to something. Responding is knowing that, hey, whatever, however I I am going to behave, my my response to this situation, it's, I got to make sure that it's in line with my character and I got to make sure that my character is in line with God. I got to make sure that this decision is in line with God. I can't, if I do something in anger, then I'm going to, I'm going to end up making a mess of things because I do it in anger. I don't want to do anything in anger. You know, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm doing exactly what God, you know, perfect, perfect example, Jonah. Jonah was a man of God. God had a plan for him. He said, this is what I want you to do. But Jonah was sort of prejudiced against the the people of Nineveh. He didn't want to go tell them and and warn them. He just wanted, he knew that they were sinful. 
And so he, he had kind of a, a haughty spirit about him, about those people, because he thought, man, they have sinned, they've done wrong, they, they deserve whatever they get. I can't tell you how many time I, times I've heard, I've heard Christians that are this way. Uh, you know, someone will do something that doesn't line up with God, and they'll say, I, I want God just, you know, God just could destroy them right now. And they're saying God could destroy them, but in their heart they're thinking, I want him to. And that's not a good thing. I don't want God to destroy anybody unless it's God's will. But I want to make sure that I'm, I'm lining up in everything according to God and what He wants because I don't want to have, I don't want to have anger in my heart. I don't want to have a, 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 a thought process that God disagrees with. How many people do you think were mad or despised Paul while he was called Saul? I mean, he was responsible for the death of uh, thousands of Christians, and yet, if any of them wanted to say, God, destroy him, God would have been thinking, that's not my plan. Y'all don't realize, God probably said y'all, he said, y'all don't realize that uh, I've got a plan for him, and there's going to be people that are going to be reading the books of my word that he is going to write, that is going to be impressed upon him. He's going to be inspired by my Holy Spirit to write down my word, so I'm not going to destroy him. I have a plan for him. So, you know, I never know what God's plan is. So I can't, in my heart, I never want to have anger uh, in, uh, about someone to the point that I've already brought their life to a conclusion because of my anger. I think that's very important that we don't, we don't do that. But sometimes we, we, uh, we have that kind of spirit because we feel like someones they've done us wrong and I wasn't deserving of this. I was deserving of more. And when we do that, then we can end up reacting in a way that is not God's plan. We can end up reacting in a way that God is basically not happy with because of pride, because of pride. You know, I had one of these situations that was, uh, was going on at my work. Everything's been going great for a long time. And uh, then we had some changes, and I was frustrated by the changes. And then some of the things that came about because of the changes. I was frustrated because of those things. And I'm trying not to give too many details, but it, it, it made me aggravated. And I felt like I was, I was deserving of more. And there was, no, again, there's nothing wrong with, with thinking that way because, you know, uh, the Bible says a laborer is worth his hire. You know, none of us are going to go and just be ripped off if we know that something is worth more. But we can have what's called excessive pride. And that's what we don't want to have. And I was getting ready. I was very close to making a decision um, based on that kind of pride. And I didn't realize it at the time. I was just, I was mad. I thought, man, God, you... You see everything that I've done, and I feel like this should happen. You know, X. And God basically was allowing things to happen for a Y scenario. And I was angry about it. And so <clears throat> I had had it set in my mind, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a, a letter of resignation. And that's, that was my plan. I was going to write a resi letter of resignation. And I didn't know where I was going to go. But I, knew, I know that God has given me the skills to go anywhere that, uh, that I want to go, and I know that. But I never did ask God before I made the decision in my mind that this is what I'm going to do. I was angry about some things, and I, I was just I was reacting. I wasn't responding. And so I, I began to pray, and this went on for probably two weeks. I was praying. Praying, 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 praying. Just asking God. And, and then I was asking um, my wife to help me to pray. I had, there was a couple of people at church that I told about this, and I was asking them to pray. And I, I said, you know, I want to make sure I'm making the right decision. And so I had basically my letter ready, and I was getting ready to do this. And I, I had went in, and I was, I was waiting for the time and I, I was I was prepared. It was I was prepared to do this. And about ten minutes before I went to do it, about ten minutes before I went to do it, 
all of a sudden God spoke to me and he, he spoke to me this and I'm gonna uh, this is uh, Proverbs 16 and verse 18 right here it's he just this is all God spoke to me this part right here he said pride goeth before destruction pride goeth before destruction that's what he told me that's all he said and as soon as he said that I said Lord do what now I said what what did you say <laughs> pride goeth before destruction I I hurried up and I got my Bible out and I went to read the rest and as I was reading this I began to just I began to cry pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before fall so let me let me first talk about this word pride because sometimes we hear the word pride sometimes we hear the word pride and we may think well I'm not supposed to be proud of anything that that I'm doing no that's not the case this kind of pride that the Bible is talking about is inordinate and basically what inordinate means is excessive or disproportional disproportionate excessive or disproportionate this is the kind of pride that uh, this scripture is talking about excessive or disproportionate uh, let me give you an example of disproportionate which most of you probably know but for anybody who may be watching this later if I went to work somewhere in a, let's say bagging groceries there's nothing wrong with that there's a lot of people that bag groceries people have put their self uh, through college bagging groceries but if I went there and they told me they said this is what we're gonna pay you to bag groceries and they told me the amount this much an hour and I said no there is no way I'm going to bag people's groceries for that amount. I want a hundred thousand dollars a year to bag these groceries. Do you think that that is proportionate to the responsibility that that I have been given? No, absolutely not. It, it's it's not. So there is in everything that we do, there is a proportionate amount. But sometimes in, when it's something with ourself, we can do that. Again, remember what I was talking about her earlier, about how we can be in a meeting and the most important thought in the room can be whatever it is that's coming out of our mouth. I can't tell you how many times I've been talking to somebody and I'm, I'm, it's my turn to speak and I'm speaking about something and the person is there going, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I know, I know they're not listening to anything that I'm saying because in their mind, what it is that they want to say is the most important thing to say. And so they're not even listening. They're not even processing what it is that I'm saying. And so a lot of times if they do this enough, I'll just stop and say, go ahead. Now, I'm guilty of this as well because there's been a time where somebody says something and I say, oh man, it sparks a thought. And I'll say, and I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very cognizant of this because I don't want to do that same thing that someone else does and so I'll think to myself don't forget this and I might write a note some quick word that will remind me but then I shut my mouth I focus my eyes and I focus my my listening ears on what it is that they're saying because if I truly value them I can tell someone oh I, I I value your input. I value what it is that you you bring to the table. But unless I'm willing to listen to them, it's it's basically just vain. I'm not. Re I really don't care about what they're saying. I want to make sure that when they speak, that I listen to what it is that they say. And so that same thing that happens right there, we end up having. Um, a disproportionate value on what it is that we are going to speak and on what it is that we are going to uh, say. And so um, if we, we do that, if we have a disproportionate value on what it is that we bring value to or what it is that we're bringing, then we can end up reacting instead of responding. Now, if I know that I'm worth a certain value, if I go and I go to get a job somewhere and I know I'm worth a certain value and they want to give me something that's just uh, way, way below the value that I bring, there, I, I can recognize that I can go and make something more than this. I'm, I'm worth more than this. There's nothing wrong with turning them down 
and going somewhere else. There's nothing wrong with that. This kind of pride here that we're talking about is when our pr the pride that we have in, in something is excessive or it's disproportionate, self-esteem. And unreasonable, unre unreasonable, that's important, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superior superiority in talents, beauty, wealth, accomplishments, rank, or elevation in office, which manifests itself in lofty airs, distance, reserve, and often in contempt of others. I'm going to read this again. Pride is inordinate or excessive, disproportionate self-esteem, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority in talents, beauty, wealth, accomplishments, rank, or elevation in office, which manifests itself in lofty airs, distance, reserve, and often in contempt of others. If I think to myself, man, and I look at myself in the mirror and I say, man, I am such a handsome looking guy. Anybody would be lucky to have me. My wife is so lucky. To, I don't really say that anymore. I'm, I've, I've, I've uh, you know, got this baldness issue that's going on. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that God has just put a mist over Hope's eyes and she thinks I'm so handsome. I married her a long time ago so when I had hair. So uh, I'm only growing it down here now. But if I were to think to myself, man, I am, I am just a handsome guy to the, to the point that, I think myself above anybody else. Everything that comes out of me, my response and the behavior that I uh, that I exhibit in front of others is going to be wrong because I'm going to end up having a contempt of others. What what value can <laughs> hope put a, a, a kiss emoji up there? What value can this other person give to me? They're so ugly, you know. I mean. What value can they bring to me? They're they're poor. What value can this other person give to me? They don't. They're not as talented as me. I'm going to end up missing out on so much that God may be trying to bring to me through somebody else. You remember Lazarus and the rich man? Listen, it didn't matter how much money that Lazarus had. God had something that he wanted to show that rich man through Lazarus, and the rich man didn't want to have anything to do with it because he had a contempt of him because he thought himself higher. You know, the, the uh, Pharisees did the exact same thing. They didn't want to listen to this Jesus because they were the ones that were over the temple, and they thought to themselves, if they thought to themselves, if God is going to be coming, if God is going to be uh, uh, coming to, to this earth, he's going to come and he's going to introduce himself to us and he's going to do it proper through us. They had a contempt of others. And so they never recognized what Jesus was doing. They never recognized that he was the Messiah. How many times are we missing something? Because we are putting a disproportionate value on our value and also on the value of others. So this was where I was at. Now let's look at the word haughty. The word haughty means uh, proceeding from excessive pride or pride mingled with contempt, manifesting pride and disdain. When you have a haughty spirit, now your pride has taken on something completely different because sometimes people can be very proud and they don't listen to others and they think themselves higher than other, someone else and they have a contempt of others. But when you have a haughty spirit, now you are manifesting that, that pride. Now you are manifesting that excessive pride and self-esteem that you have for yourself. You're uh, allowing it to uh, be exhibited to others so other people can see it. That's why it says proceeding from excessive pride or pride mingled with contempt, manifesting pride and disdain. So verse 18 of Proverbs 16, pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit goes before a fall. You know, if you think that you're standing and no, you can't be touched, you better take notice lest you fall. That's what the Bible says. You better make sure if I'm going to do something, if I'm going to do something and I don't care what anybody else says and I'm going to do it, I better make sure that it's what God wants me to do. You know, I remember one time uh, King David and them, they were getting ready to go up. They had just won this battle and they said, man, look at what we did. We just destroyed them guys. And they said, let's go up to Ai. 
this, this, uh, the city of Ai, and let's, let's destroy them. They never asked God if they were supposed to. And so they went up, and they got their tails whipped. And they were, they were, up, they were just demoralized because they said, why did why, God was with us in this one battle. Why was he not with us in this battle? They should have asked God, God, are you happy with this decision? Is it what you want us to do? Are you happy with our lives? Is everything going right? And so this was the predicament that I was in. I'm getting ready to react instead of respond. I'm getting ready to do something because of the value that I thought that I brought. But I, I never, I, I, I take that back. I was asking God. I had been asking God for two weeks. I had made sure that I, I had continued to pray. Now, what I should have done, what I should have done, which uh, God gave me the answer in time, but man, it was just by the skin of my teeth. I mean, it was so close to me making a decision. I should have asked God and continued to ask him until he gave me an answer. Because as soon as he gives me an answer, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about the consequences. I know that this is what God wants me to do, and he's going to make a way. So God gave me this scripture about 10 minutes before I made this decision. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Verse 19. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely. Man, I'm going to say that again because maybe someone who's watching this now or later needs to hear that. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. Many times when we are reacting, when we're reacting, we're thinking that our reaction is going to spur on changes in other people to the point that it's going to bring about good. And sometimes it might, but only if it's what God wants us to do. That's why it's so important. Don't ever think, I don't want anybody to confuse this message and you think, well, I just got to, I'm getting mistreated at work and I just got to deal with it because I got to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm, I stay low and humble. No, God doesn't expect for you to do that. You ask God what you're supposed to do and he may say, listen, I got something better for you and you need to get out of here. And, you know, even for my own decision, I don't know exactly what it is that God is going to do. I'm still at that waiting period. It's just that the timing of what I was about to do and the way that I was going to go about it was incorrect. And that's what God was telling me. He wasn't saying that my thoughts were wrong about what I was going to do. He wasn't saying that I was undeserving. He wasn't saying that what I was thinking was wrong, but the reaction that I was bringing about was going to be incorrect and not according to him. And so God saved me from making a decision that may have put me in a, you know, right now, I, and I'm saying this, I don't know what it is that God is going to do. God may be getting ready to open up something for me, and I don't know where it is or if it's within where I'm at or somewhere else, but God may be getting ready to open up something for me in two months. And he's saying, just do this, continue to do what you're doing because I've got a timing on this and you're getting ready to have something different in two months. And, you know, I believe that something is coming. I won't get into all the other battles that we've had going on with uh, just me and uh, Hope with our, uh, her vehicle and just a number of things. But I believe that God is just allowing us to go through this season. And everybody, everybody right now, uh, you know, is going through something with this COVID-19. Everybody is. Uh, but we all have our own personal battles and things that we're facing. And, you know, I can recognize that the enemy is taking us through a season. God is allowing him to so that we can be tested. And that's fine. I, I, I trust God in all things, and I know he's going to make a way. But if I react to something, God may have something for me in two months and if I'll wait and listen to him, God will move me right out of one thing and into another. Or I can end up reacting instead of responding. Responding will be listen to him and respond in two months. Reacting may make me go through something that I don't have to go through for two months. But I did it because I was mad and I had pride and I thought I'm deserving of more. And I'm so thankful that I continued for two weeks to ask God, God, what it is that you, what is it that you want me to? I mean, I was in my knees on my office asking God, God, tell me, is this what you want me to do? 
And right before I was about to do it, God spoke to me and gave me this verse and say, and said, pride goeth before destruction. Let's read on right here. Verse 20, he that handleth a matter wisely shall, shall find good. And whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Again, the reason we make decisions is because we want to be happy. The way that we'll be happy is if we trust in the Lord. Now, I want to cover something else right here because, I, you know, there may be someone who's watching now or watching later. Sometimes we say we're trusting in the Lord. Well, I'm trusting in the Lord. Sometimes God is showing us something that we're supposed to do and we're too timid or afraid to do it. I, there are a lot of people that are just kind of sitting on the front porch waiting for the Lord to come back and God is saying, will you get off this porch occupy until I come. I've got something that I want you to do. Sometimes maybe God is trying to make, get us to make a hard decision or to do something that is hard. How many times, you know, look at uh, Samuel when he had to go down there to Saul and Saul had disobeyed God and he had kept King Agag alive. How many, you know, there's a lot of people out there right now when they would have came down there and they knew God didn't tell them to do this. God told them to kill everybody that was there. And King Agag is happy. He, he his, Everything's destroyed, but he's there. He's eating. He was left alive by Saul. And he's thinking, you know, this is great. It would be so easy for a lot of people to say, why did you keep him alive? Well, I just, you know, I, I spared him. A lot of people would say, well, you know, that's, that's, that was a nice thing you did, I guess. And they wouldn't want to offend him. They wouldn't want to offend Saul, who was the king, because they're thinking that, remember, uh, uh, Samuel was someone who was not under the, well, he was under the authority or under the rulership of, of, uh, of Saul, but he placed a higher value in the one who put Saul in that position, which was God. And so he didn't care of what Saul thought about him. He cared about what God thought. Many times people won't make hard decisions and they, they won't do what is necessary because they're afraid to uh, displease people because they're thinking, well, these people may give me something. They may, uh, you know, I, I get favor for them or they love me or whatever it is. And they don't make hard decisions. I've been in that situation. I was in, I've been in that situation many times where I had to tell someone the truth even if it meant that I could be offending that person. But again, my favor comes from God, not from man. I have to make sure that I'm always doing what it is that God wants me to do. Let's move on here. I'm going to move through this uh, very quickly. Verse uh, 21, it says, The wise in heart shall be called prudent. And the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise, verse 23, this is good. This is really good right here. I want you to get this one. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth. And addeth learning to his lips. I've got to read this again. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Remember, the heart is the faculty of the mind. It's where the seat of your emotions are. It's the, the faculty of your thinking. It's where you make decisions from. Wisdom. When someone is wise, it is, uh, it's basically stating that this individual has wisdom. You remember what wisdom is. You can learn about something and you get knowledge. That's information. Knowledge is information. I can get information all day long. I can get knowledge. Um, but unless I apply that knowledge, I am, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not showing the application of wisdom. Wisdom is when you learn something and then you apply that knowledge. That's what wisdom is. So the Bible says here, the heart of the wise, which means someone who in their thinking, they have got knowledge from past experiences or from the word of God or from someone else. They have some information and now they're going to apply that knowledge in, uh, uh, towards a situation. When you do that, you are teaching your mouth. 
or addeth learning to his lips. How many times have you ever opened your mouth and said something and then you regretted it? Husbands, you know what I'm talking about. Wives, you know what I'm talking about, even though you probably never admitted it to your husbands. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, I have, there have been many times where me and Hope were talking about something, having a conversation, and I knew that I could say the right thing, and I wouldn't have to argue with her. But, but I knew that I could go ahead and tell her something, and I knew it would open up an argument. And there's times where I've said, you know what, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. And it's not too long after that where I'm thinking, why did I not keep my mouth shut? You know, and, and so um, we've all been in that situation. And so if I'm in one of those situations where I remember, now I have knowledge. Not only did I, do I have knowledge, uh, but I have knowledge based on experience what, how should I respond to this? How should I, what should be my behavior? What should be my response? I can be thinking about the situation and say, mm, I'm going to choose peace this time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go the wrong, the wrong route here because I want to be able to uh, sleep in peace tonight. I don't want to be up for a while and arguing about something. Uh, you know, that's what this, this verse is talking about. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. When I began to think about an experience that I had similar to the one that I'm going through right now, I began to think about how I had how I had reacted back then. I began to think about what had happened based on that reaction. I began to think about all of the trickle down effect from it. And I began to think about how it didn't bring me good. I didn't ask God. I didn't wait on God to tell me what I was supposed to do. And I went through a very, very hard time of learning, about a year and a half of, of learning. And it was, man, it was one of the roughest periods in my career that I've ever went through. And I learned a lot. And so here I was getting ready to face something very similar. Now, I had added a lot more value. And it's not to say that my decision may be different, and but I'm going to wait on God and I'm going to wait on His timing about it. I'm not going to react because oh man, I, you know, this can't happen to me. I, I can't react that way. I've got to wait on God and I've got to respond. I've got to make sure that I do everything right and according to God. And so I allowed that experience that I had a long time ago to begin to guide my mouth, guide my heart, add learning to my lips so that I made sure that what I spoke was exactly what God would be pleasing with. Amen. And I think that is a very important thing. This is the last verse I'm going to give you, and then we're going to close. This is verse 32 of Proverbs 16. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Oh, man. He that ruleth his spirit. It is so easy. It is, uh, it is so easy. If someone does us wrong, it is so easy to react and to just say, you know what, I'm going to let them have it. If, some, if you were standing in line at the grocery store and so, you have a, car, uh, a gallon of milk in your hand, and it is obvious that you're next in line. And someone pulls in with a full buggy packed high, and they act like that you're not there. And they pull right in front of you. Now, most of us are going to say something, <laughs> right? Uh, but it could be so easy for us to say, listen, you ain't going to pull that. But, you know, we, it could be so easy for us to say, I'm going to let you have it. And I've seen this happen. I've seen people just blow up on somebody. And I've never seen the other person say, oh, my goodness, I didn't realize that I had uh, just uh, brought a breach against you. I, you know, I didn't realize until you yelled at me. Thank you so much for telling me off. I'm going to move to the end of this line. Thank you, sir. I've never seen that happen. When you react and you begin to yell at somebody and you begin to tell them off, there's only one response that you're going to get. They're going to just be kind of upset with you 
or either they're going to be afraid of you. Which either one of those things are not, they're not really good. I want to make sure that I'm slow to anger because that will allow me to be better than the mighty and to have a rule over my spirit. To have rule over your spirit means someone can do you wrong and you can be slow to speak and to think about what you're going to say and say, listen, maybe there's some other things that are going on in your life. I, I don't think that all this anger is towards me. But can, can, we just, can we just talk through this for a second? If you respond that way, then you have rule over your spirit. Don't allow your emotions to control how it is that you're going to speak. Don't allow your emotions to control you. Don't allow it. Don't allow your emotions and what you think that you're deserving of to cause you to put uh, uh, just basically a, a wall in between you and the relationship of somebody else. Uh, there are people that are mad at people at churches right now or mad at people at jobs right now because someone re reacted in a certain way and they may not even remember what it was. But instead of being having control over their spirit and saying, all right, I care about maintaining this relationship with this person. I care about maintaining my character. I care to respond in the right way, in a holy way. That is the most important thing. When you can do that, and I tell you, having rule over your spirit takes a lot, a lot of training. And I have seen people, young and old, that don't have a hold on it at all. And every one of us, at some point or another, maybe we have allowed ourselves to slip. But I want to make sure that I always have control of my spirit. And I want to pray right now for everybody that's watching or for those who may watch this later. Because I feel like there's a lot of us that may have a problem with this. And uh, nobody else may know it. Maybe it's enough for you to be that it builds up inside of you so that it causes you distress and frustration while you're taking a shower because you're so angry taking that shower, thinking about this situation. God doesn't want you to be that way. He wants you to be happy. Uh, it, it it's not even good for your health to be that stressed all the time and to be frustrated. So let's pray. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, help us to have control over our spirits. God, help us to have control over our spirit. Lord, this is self-control is one of the fruits of the spirit. So God, I pray that that gift would manifest in us so that when before we react, we would be people who are thinking about what it is we're about to say, about to say, that we not only think about our own feelings, but we consider the feelings of others when we say this. And God, help us to make sure that we're doing everything according to the way that you want us to. Lord, that may mean that when we consider what it is that we're about to say, it may offend the person. They may not agree with us, but it's okay. Because as long as I know that it is what you would have me to do, then God, I'm okay with it. God, I can respond with self-control and, and respond in a way that I'm not angry if I know that I'm carrying out the will of God. Man, it makes it so easy. It makes it so easy. It made it easy for Samuel to slay King Agag right there in front of King Saul because he knew I'm doing exactly what God wants me to do. God, help us to make those hard decisions, Lord, if it is your will. God, help us to respond to people in a right manner and consider what it is that they may be thinking and the way that they may respond. But again, most importantly, that we're lining up with you. God, we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want to ask everyone, if you're watching, if you have a YouTube account, please remember to hit the like on this video. Don't forget to, to subscribe. And uh, we'll be back in our, our normal service at church next week. Uh, again, I, I'm not sure if I'll have uh, an online message next week, but I will most likely the week after as uh, I get everything set up for uh, being able to do this message and to do the one at church and it'll probably again it'll probably be a repeat uh, but I want to be able to reach people that are 
maybe not watching our stream or, or at our church and reach as many people. That's the most important thing to me is to reach as many people that I can with the gospel all of my days. God bless you, and I hope to see all of you soon. Amen.